Hi guys and welcome back to another episode of the Percussion Revolver Series. Today we're going to be talking about my Spiller and Burr. Now, as I pointed out in other videos, I had a problem with this when I got it because of how tight the frame was and etc. that the flash coming back here was blowing the caps off. As I recently pointed out, I fixed that problem now by going to number 10 caps and beveling these edges a little bit more to get a little bit more let the gas go forward instead of going back. And I began working up more of a general purpose light load for use in hunting. Okay. And so through trial and error, I came out to be 18 grains of 3F Go X and a 375 round ball, no wad, and the number 10 Remington cap produced the best group. Now I want to move that group to hit the point of sight because I'm going to be using this at a 0 to 10, 15 yard, probably more like 10 yard, for shooting bunny rabbits and stuff. So it needs to be a fairly short range sight in, etc. So, let's talk about the group. Okay, here's the group. I was aiming for the black dot in the center of the orange pasty, and here is the group right here. I had two flyers, but the rest of the ten shots went right there. So that was eight shots in that cluster and two flyers. The two flyers could have been me or just simply a ball that wasn't perfectly round or whatever. But the fact it groups there. So I want to move it over and down and you can see it's about oh about four or five inches high and two inches left. Now I've already deepened the sight notch on my spilling bird to get down as far as I can. So it's as far as I can go is depth wise of cutting into the frame right here and deepening that. At the present I'm using just the tip, I mean just see the tip of the side sticking up like that in the bottom of that channel to get this. So I need to do something else. Now they talk about on a Colt down here where the barrel joins the frame you can take a couple of strokes off that and set, let the barrel settle down just a grunt. Can't do that on a solid frame. So what I'm going to do is draw file the muzzle. Now let me explain. Okay, what am I talking about? When you see high-speed camera footage of a percussion revolver shooting, you'll see initially a big puff of, of flame, and then it kind of drops down for just a split second, and then you see the actual ball exit and the explosion behind it. Okay, what that's happening is you fire, the ball is making the transition into the barrel, and then it is not arbitrated, it hadn't flattened out enough yet to really bite deep into the rifling, and gas blows around it through all of the rifling slots. Whew, it goes by it. Then the ball gets squeezed enough as it's coming down the barrel, friction of it sliding down the barrel and that gas pressure pushing behind it, it kind of, mm, like you squeeze a marshmallow, and it gets a little fatter and that grips the rifle and kind of seals it off a little bit. So there's still some, but not nearly as much. About the time it gets to the end of the muzzle, if everything is perfect and it gets right here to the end of the muzzle like that, just as it's about to come out, that uniform gas pressure behind it, as it gets there, it does this, and it comes out evenly all the 360 all the way around the ball. Like that. And it, that that cone of gas is going to be surrounding the ball in the middle like that, like a cloud coming out, jetting out in all directions. That kind of keeps it centered. Well, what if your, your muzzle is not truly 90 degrees square? What if it's at a little bit of a taper? Well, what that means is as the ball gets right there to the very tippy tippy end, the gas may blow out on the bottom corner or something first and that gas pressure loves whatever is the least path of resistance so if it drops there even that nanosecond before everywhere else it wants to flow out there and instead of you getting a nice even flow you get from one side you see it kind of like starts there and it goes down and it acts like English on a cue ball because that gas pushes out this way and that kind of pushes the ball out to the side so you need a true uh, muzzle on it, a 90 degree muzzle. You see this a lot in high power rifles for long range shooting because a damaged crown, the, the 
taper right there in the muzzle can affect point of impact because of that gas pressure blowing out at that last split second. Well, I'm going to utilize that gas pressure exploding, try to put a little English on the ball and make it go down and to the right just a little bit. Now, since with the sights lined up, here it's throwing there, that tells me the top, this side, right here, here, and this gun, of course, not loaded, right there, that top flat, is where I want that gas pressure to come out. Because I can tell you, I have put a T-square on this. And this lower part, here's the, rear, here's the front side, this lower part is actually a couple of ten thousandths shorter than this side. And so the gas is blowing out on this side and blowing it uphill is what's happening. So I'm going to counteract that. I'm going to start from top dead center and go across and down. So this top barrel flat and this side barrel flat, I'm going to dry file a couple of strokes. And let me set it up onto the vise and we'll do that. Okay, I'm going to take a thick piece of wool. I'm going to wrap it around the barrel and I'm going to put it into the vise just like this to grip it. Make sure it's good and secure in there so it don't pop out. I'm going to take a nice long file. Now remembering where I said from there across, I'm going to put my glasses on so I can see clear. I'm going to lay the file up there flat on that top edge so that it comes into that actual edge of the muzzle, the bore. I want it to actually go along to actually take the edge of the bore, okay, where the ball comes out. Put it up there like that, and I'm going to stroke. Okay, I have now done about 10 strokes where it's on the top and on that barrel flat predominantly. That should curve it down and in. Now, getting a hold of the gun, we're going to load it up with that load and we're going to see if it, where it changed point of impact or did it change point of impact. We're about to find out. So let me set it up and I'll turn the camera back on. Okay, let's say a quick thing about sighting in. I want to be on a solid rest with my both elbows down. I want something that I can prop from the trigger guard to sight with. I don't want to do this because that can affect point of impact because of the muzzle. You want the trigger guard to touch the hands in the same position, both elbows down, relax where you're looking straight down the sights at the target, not having to lean around or whatever. Eliminate as much human error as possible. Okay, we're loaded up. Let me shoot. Don't be in a hurry. Always let your eyes relax.
we spin it to break it loose. Now let's go take a look at the, the grouping. Okay, here was my first target. And you see it's up and over like three inches. Now it's up and over about an inch maybe so i did move my point of impact to the right i'm going to do a couple of more strokes and see if i can center that up a little bit more and then i need to go across the top on both sides to kind of push it down but i did correct windage a little bit right there so now let me put the gun back in the vise and take a few more strokes across the top flat to push it down a little bit and a little bit more on the side to push it over. This is not bad. This is like less than an inch now out of line. Right there would be the center. So, but now I want to push it down. So I'm going to go across the top and push it down. Let me get that done and I'll be back with you. Okay, I have draw filed some more up on that top and on that bevel as we talked about. I have reloaded six. I'm going to go back now and shoot the same target again and see if that group moves downward. Okay? Okay, it's got it consistently where my grouping is staying in this area. And it's definitely like two inches further in than it was before. It's just above point of impact like two inches. Now I could Kentucky windage that if I wanted to. If I aimed here on that edge, I'm going to put my targets in there. It's almost vertical. Okay, I'm going to reload one more time, and I'm going to take about 20, uh, 10 more strokes off of it and see if I can move it. This time it'll be the entire side, move it to the left more. I can handle elevation, but I want my windage dead on, and I am just a little bit windage to the left. So I want it straight up and down windage before I start doing Kentucky windage. Let me do that right quick. Okay, 10 more strokes. This should throw it down close to point of impact. Now in this group there's going to be at least two flyers because in loading I figured out that I had two 380s as opposed to 375 round ball. Everything else 375. So there's two 380s. So they're going to go different points. Let's see. Okay, now it's brought it further down. I'm going to shift to an unused target, rotate it down here, restaple it, and go with that one and see how that affects it. See if I can make it onto that orange dot now by dropping it down just one or two grunts more. Okay, last group of the day. I'm going to intentionally aim one inch low and see how that affects my point. She's just being ornery. I was aiming right here, and now it's high left again. Yet, when we did this, we corrected windage. Now it's over about two inches and four inches high. She's getting dirty. As she's getting dirty and fouling out, the pressure's going up, it's causing that impact. And I don't have my gun butter with me to clean her with. I left it sitting in the house. So that's going to have to do for today. But that's not a bad group, you know, to begin with. 
Now, did I create windage? Yeah, it did move over, but now she's fouling out. And so I need to clean her and get back down to a base clean where we're at. And then shoot it and see where my impact is. I believe I have corrected it, cut, brought it over and dropped it down some. But now that the, the bottom of the lambs and the grooves are full of caked hard fouling, it's making my pressures go up and therefore my point of impact is going upward. But still that's about inch and a half left and about oh four inches high where we started out. But as you saw as I shot it did drift it down. Just it's fouled out now. But I've shot what 30 rounds through it with just running a brush and that was it. Uh, so yeah, now she needs cleaning. So I will clean her. I will come back out and we will do this as a part two starting with a clean greased barrel let's see what it does lubrication is a big thing and i don't have the lubrication right now and so as she's fouling out she's changing pressure and changing point of impact so let's clean her start up and in part two we'll actually see where she's heading thank you for watching guys i hope you enjoyed this video if you have hit that like share and subscribe button before you go i'd really appreciate it Till next time, guys, I'm Blackie wishing you safe journeys. Have a great day, guys.